Okay. Angular velocity has magnitude omega equals d theta dt. Okay. by the right-hand rule. So, for example, if uh, this wheel is spinning in this plane, okay, my fingers, yeah, let's have it, well, okay, let's do it this way because then, then it works better with the camera if I can work myself with the camera. Okay, again, spinning in this direction to get the direction of the angular velocity, well, I let my fingers go in the direction of rotation and my thumb points in the direction of angular velocity. Okay, that's the convention we use and it works out and we can justify it in all kinds of ways, but right now, let's just get used to the convention. And that turns out to be parallel to the axis about which it's rotating, right? Okay? So, the right-hand rule turns out to be parallel to the axis of rotation and which way, this way or this way, if the axis is in this direction, depends on what the right-hand rule tells you. If it was rotating like this, it would be here. If it's rotating like this, it's here with your right hand, right? Okay? So, is the derivative with respect to time of your angular velocity, right? Okay? And your angular velocity is a vector. So if this thing is speeding up or slowing down, okay, so here we have it. It's moving in this direction. Angular velocity in this direction but it's slowing down. So your angular velocity vector coming out here is getting shorter and shorter, right? So the change in angular velocity is always in this direction, okay? And that would be the rate of change of your angular velocity. How much does your angular velocity change in a given time interval divided by the time interval gives you your angular acceleration, okay? So we could say that alpha equals d omega dt if we understand alpha to be angular acceleration. Okay? Now torque. Okay? Um, easier to illustrate torque with a beam like this meter stick here rotating about this point, okay, in this plane. If I exert a force on this thing, okay, it tends to accelerate it in this direction, right? Okay, if it stays in this plane so that the angular velocity remains in this direction, then the acceleration also has to be in this direction because the change in angular velocity will be in this direction, right? Now, if it doesn't change, you know, if it doesn't stay in the plane, if it rotates out of the plane when it does, this gets a little more complicated, and we'll address that in a minute, but let's just think of that. Um, so if I exert a force on this rotating beam, okay, what does that do? How, how does that affect the angular velocity? It depends on 
where I exert the force, out here or in here. Okay? Further out I exert it, the more torque I have. And it's the torque that does acceleration. Now from all that, Let's do this. If the line of omega doesn't change, then your angular acceleration is along that line. <coughs> now, the line of omega can easily change. Think of major red twirling a baton all around, right? You got all this. <coughs> angular <coughs> momentum you know, or angular velocities keep changing direction. Okay, so the direction perpendicular to the rotation is continually changing all the way around uh, in, in all kinds of directions depending on what they're trying to do, right? Okay, so if the line of omega doesn't change, to simplify the case for a minute, then alpha is always along that line. Now a torque We'll say, let's say a net torque. Um, have this, Newton's second law for rotation. And this is a vector law. I haven't written it as a vector law. I've waved my hands over the magnitude and stuff like that up to this point. We've done a lot with net torques and accelerations and moments of inertia. Okay? Of course, we haven't yet quite finished defining moment of inertia. Actually, we have defined it. Okay. It's the quantity you use so that the kinetic energy is one half moment of inertia times the square of the angular velocity, <laughs> right? The definition that we're just using in this course. It's pretty explicitly using it. Okay. So net torque is this times this, right? If the direction of omega or if the line of omega doesn't change, then the net torque has to be in the direction of the angular acceleration, right? Okay. Okay, and that torque has to be, then, be along the same line as your angular velocity in that case. Which means then for a beam or anything rotating in this direction, in this plane, a net force exerted in that plane will always produce a torque whose direction is the same as the direction of the acceleration. Okay? which is therefore along the line of omega and this direction being the positive direction in x, y, z space. A torque that tends to accelerate in the counterclockwise direction has to be positive. Okay? Which means, well,
Now, there's a little bit of a jump here. And you want to think your way through, okay? If R is a vector from the axis, to the point of application, of a force F, it follows Torque is R cross F. And that's all there is to it. Okay? Combine that with this, and you've got a lot of angular dynamics.